what we are going to do next is we are going to log into Amazon's developer console and then start building that skill. To do that, you need to visit this particular URL, developer.amazon.com slash Alexa slash console slash ask. This is the shortcut to the console itself. So it will ask you to log in here and that's where you need to provide your Amazon login and password. If you're doing it for the first time, it might it might ask you a few more questions, but those will be easy to tackle. So uh, once you have that account, you log in and this is where you land. So once you log in, this is where you land. This is the Alexa developer console. Here, what we are trying to do today is create a skill. One point to remember, I'm using Edge as the browser here because in Chrome, everything works, but while testing the skill, somehow my audio does not work, okay? So it, it just happens to me, uh, especially on Windows, it works on Mac. If you are facing something similar, you can use Edge like me, or you can try Firefox. I have not tried that. Anyways, let's get going. Create skill. Here, you need to give the name of the skill. Let me call it birthday cracker. Next, what you need to do is you need to select the locale. I'm using English US. You need to select a language which matches with your Alexa's language. If you have used English US in your device setting, you need to use English US. If you're using a different version of English, you need to choose that here. Or you need to add additional languages to the skill to support that. Next, you need to choose a model to add to your skill. Here, uh, we will be defining it ourselves, everything from scratch because we want to learn. So we will keep it selected to the default, which is custom. Going forward, it will also ask you where you want to host the backend of the skill. So we discussed that we will be provisioning our own. We'll be building a C-sharp backend and we'll be hosting on Azure. Once this is done, we'll hit create skill. Next, it asks if you want to use a template for your skill. Again, we want to start from scratch here. At this point, it takes a couple of minutes to build the skill. So it will create a bare bone boilerplate code for your skill and it will try to build it to make sure everything works fine. It will send you these notifications as, the, as it progresses. So your skill is now ready and you are inside the skill. As you can see from here, this birthday tracker is the name of our skill. The next thing that you need to do is you need to give an invocation name for your skill, how you want to start your skill. What will you tell to Alexa to start your skill? Here, I will call it the same name, birthday tracker. So uh, what will happen here is you need to start the skill saying, Alexa, start birthday tracker. Okay. Or Alexa, ask birthday tracker to do something. So now, um, so that's your invocation name. Now, what you can, now you will save the model here just to save that. Once that is done, we will come to the interaction model. In interaction model comes the intents. So before we get into intents, let's do a quick recap. So intents are something that you want to do, right? So once your application is open or once your skill is loaded, is started in Alexa, every dialogue that you do, whatever you speak to the device or your skill has to match to one of the intents. How that matching happens, we will see in a short while, but it has to match to one or the other intents. And that intent, along with what you have said, goes to the backend, and that's how you will be able to handle that because you need to handle based on the intent. Now, there are a few intent that comes as part of built-in intents and already added to your skill. One is cancel intent. So when your skill is doing something in the back end and you want to cancel that operation, you can say cancel. In that case, the cancel intent gets selected and sent to your back end. Help intent is also helpful if you actually write some back end code to actually give some helpful information to your user, right? If, you, if they ask, say, like help, then the help intent gets selected and you will have to send some help information to the user. Stop intent is self-explanatory. If you say stop to come out of the skill, the stop intent actually gets hit. Navigate home intent. Navigate home intent is actually used for screen devices. If you have a screen device like Echo Show, that's where you can use a navigate home intent. 
which tells the backend that user wants to go back to the home screen. Fallback intent. So as I said, each and every dialogue that you do has to match with one or the other intent. If it does not, then ultimately, after trying all the intents that your skill has configured, it will map it to fallback intent and it will send you the fallback intent as the request to the backend. Now, as a developer, you will have to see how you want to handle that. One way of handling that would be replying, saying that, hey, I did not understand what you said. Can you repeat? So that is how you poke the user to actually try again issuing the command, giving an opportunity to Alexa to try to understand and map it to the intent again. And there is this hello world intent. This is just a placeholder intent. We will delete it by the end of this tutorial. So don't worry about it. These are the built-in intents, but these are not going to fulfill our requirements, right? So we need some additional intents to be built. So our first intent was to ask, when is the next birthday? So now let's create a new intent. So here we will click on add intent. Here you need to give the name of that intent. In the previous video, we said that we will name that intent next birthday intent. So I will just copy paste that here and click on create custom intent. Once that is done, this is very important. This is where you say what all different language or phrases user will use to actually try to get the next birthday from user. So here you need to be imaginative. You need to think what you would say to the skill or to Alexa to get the next birthday from the skill, right? So maybe you will say, can you tell me the next birthday? Don't put question marks here because question marks are not supported. Okay, so just give the phrase. I may also say, when is the next birthday? I may also say, next birthday, please. It is recommended that you at least add pipe. Then what Alexa will do is, it will give you its own recommendations that you should add these two. Okay. And if you like some of those, you can add those in fact. So uh, I will also say next birthday to wish. Tell me the next birthday. Okay. And you can keep adding them, refining it further and further while you test with the skill. So as you see now, it's trying to determine the recommendations. So now this recommendation thing is ready. I will click on this. And as you can see, it has given us a list of other phrases that we can add. Okay. So we can add here or we can reject. It's up to you. Anyways, so we have few phrases which are already added. We can fine tune these later on. So I will save the model again. Now, once this is done, what you will do is you will go back to build, click on build, and then you will actually build the model again. So now you can see the build is completed. Once the build is completed, we go to test tab. So this is where I was telling that Chrome sometimes doesn't work for me, but if it works for you, you are more than welcome to use Chrome as well. So here by default, the test is disabled for the skill. You need to turn it on into development mode. Once this is done, you can either speak to the skill or you can type here. You may also test it on your phone or Alexa device at this point because it has been enabled there too. So first we will test if our start command is working or not. So here I'm giving the start birthday tracker phrase, which will actually generate a launch request for me. Okay which the backend will get. Launch request. So here, the launch request has been created. Now, of course, it will not work because there is no backend plug to it yet. But still, the reason we wanted to test this is to check whether at least it's working and we will need this JSON while building our C-sharp skill. So let me tell you why. So you will build the C-sharp skill on your local development environment. Now, Alexa, even though whatever skill you have developed so far, it is not calling for Azure hosted backend and neither it can call the web API, which is running on your local machine either, right? But you will need some JSON or some request template or format to actually test your skill. Whenever we will make a new intent, we will try to access that intent here. It will of course fail. It will not give you the response that you wanted, but we will copy this XML 
and test it in our local to make sure that our backend code is working as expected. That being said, we will also try to issue the intent here. When is the next birthday? Intent. Okay. Next, next underscore, underscore birthday, birthday underscore intent. intent. Okay. So that means that the intent did work. The intent request was also created. So launching our skill worked and starting that intent also worked. So now let's move over to C-sharp backend development.